barley net blotch. It's a hideous disease and one that, if left unchecked, can easily take 30 or 40% of your yield. It thrives in these wet, damp and warm conditions and if you're saving seed for several generations, you know it's going to be worth. That inoculum is on the seed from the day you plant. Anywhere where you've had continuous barley or where there's barley residue still there, you're also going to get carryover of that disease. It's one of those hideous pathogens that looks like the crop's clean and then bang, it's suddenly in there all over it and it's not going to let go. And in a season when you've got plenty of moisture, when it's worst, that's got to be the worst case scenario where you know that your crop could have done well, but you've run out not of moisture, but of green leaf area. And in barley, the lower leaves are key. Here they are, all dead. The crops midway through grain fill and you've got a tiny bit of green on the flag leaf. Flag leaf's really small in barley. That's why the later sprays are not important. The flag leaf spray is not so crucial, but the T1, the growth stage 30 spray is the real key to get right. So this is in our fungicide trials, had absolutely nothing. If I go over here and show you this, much, much cleaner, beautifully clean barley, two sprays of Skyway. So Bixofen, Prothioconazole, Tebuconazole. In any good barley program, you've got to get in early, but you've also got to use Prothioconazole. Unfortunately, there are no other good actives at the moment that'll work on that. So, people often ask me, can I lessen the cost of my barley fungicide spray? And the answer is no, essentially. Some years you may feel like you can get away with it, but this is the consequence of using two doses of tebuconazole. A good brand of tebuconazole, and you can see all the brown leaf in here, is actually not much better than the untreated, all the way down there, a lot of net plotch. And that was applied at the same timings as the Skyway was. So a quality tebuconazole still won't hold the disease. I also don't use strobiliarins. I've looked for the greening effect with azoxystrobin, paraclostrobin, trifloxystrobin. This is a plot that's had a late fungicide just to see what it does. But in general, when they first came out 15 years ago, plus now you're talking, they were quite good. The strobiliarins were very good at controlling that blotch, but as with septoria, they've all broken down. You'll get a greening effect, but don't expect a massive amount of activity on that blotch. And one final thing, if you've got a really wet year, where you're planting barley on barley, I actually went with a, what I call a T0 spray or a T0. This is nice and clean. You can see the crop sort of dying off towards the bottom, naturally senescing. But I put half a litre of Artea on here and it's beautifully clean. So that's now a three spray program. Didn't cost a lot extra and it was only 10 days before the main dose of Skyway. But it just helps release the pressure and if you get delayed with your sprayer or you get a breakdown, you know that you're in a safe place. More importantly, you can use anything. I've used Artea. Um, that's of course a triazole group. We want to try and move away from that. So perhaps Cyprodonil is something we're going to look at in future. So mix those actives up, but just make sure you get the right ones and apply them well. Get the sprayer set up properly, know your growth stages and get your timings right. And that is how you get clean barley.